welcome everybody to Building My Legacy podcast today. I'm with Michelle Molitor, who is a transformational therapist. She has done a tremendous amount of work at looking at how do you rapidly transform how you're processing and looking at your feelings, information that you're taking in. And I think as leaders, that's one of the things that people expect us to be able to do and perhaps even look to us to help them move in their own lives. And so, Michelle, I'm going to let you start by talking a little bit about what your background is and what brought you to doing what you're doing. Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me on your podcast, Lois. It's lovely to be here with you. And um, yeah, you know, my work over the last almost 20 years now has been a very um, interesting and joyful journey, right? With its ups and downs like everyone does. And um, I, I stumbled my way into becoming a coach when um, I had first moved out here to the San Francisco Bay Area at the height of the dot-com boom. Um, I was in web development. I was a creative director in my former life. And um, that was a, a challenging time. And ultimately, I, I got effectively bullied out of my job. And it was quite devastating for me. It really shattered my confidence. And I was a deer in the headlights, not really knowing what to do or where to turn. And my uncle in his wisdom pointed me to get a coach. I was like, what? What's a coach? He's like, oh, these things called career coaches. And I was like, okay, where, where do I find one? And so through the process of being coached, I actually found my true life calling, which was to become a coach and to be of service to people in a much deeper way. So I went on to get trained and certified and started my company Nectar Consulting in 2001 and have been doing um, work with individuals and teams and organizations ever since then. Right. And along that path, I've always been a bit of a learning junkie, right? Always taking in new ideas, modalities, information. Um, I find neuroscience fascinating. <laughs> I, I read it on the weekends. I know I'm kind of a geek. Um, but I'm, I'm always amazed at how our brain works and how we operate and where we get stuck. Um, what happens when our confidence gets crushed and how do we get it back? Where is it living inside of us that we can pull it back out? And several years ago now, I discovered the work of Marissa Peer, who's a world-renowned therapist. And she's developed a, a modality called rapid transformational therapy, which is a really amazing and unique combination that brings together um, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, neuro-linguistic programming, and hypnosis all rolled up into one. And so I did some work with Marissa and found it to be so powerfully transformative for me in a matter of weeks. Things that I had been trying to get at for almost 20 years were eliminated. So when she started uh, training people in her methodology, I was like, yes, pick me, and um, went on to get trained and certified with her. Um, I've become one of her graduate trainers. I've worked um, inside of, you know, with her and her team to develop some other programs as well. And in doing this work, which is a really deep dive into the subconscious, essentially, to help people remove their blocks and get out of their own way faster. Um, I found that when I combined RTT with my coaching, it became really supercharged, right? So what I've created, um, I call it my 30-day rapid rewiring program. And so I work with clients individually and we get at those deeply held beliefs at a subconscious level that you can't get through conscious thinking, right? It's very difficult to get at them through um, talk therapy or even coaching because they're buried in this deeper um, realms of your subconscious. So through this process, I'm able to help clients identify the blocks, um, neutralize them, neutralize the emotional charge that are around those beliefs that they hold about themselves of, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not lovable, whatever it might be that's blocking their health, their well-being, their success in life. 
and then instill new empowering beliefs, strategies for success, goals, and steps into place. So inside of 30 days, you're able to eliminate the old beliefs, rewrite them, rewire their neural pathways literally, and make these quantum leaps forward in their lives because they've let go of stuff that had been weighing them down for years and years and years. So it's an amazing process and it's truly um, my joy to do it in the world. So when you do something like that, who do you target? Who is this best for? Who can you reach the most effectively? Sure. Well, I found, um, well, I've worked with, with people from kids as young as seven up to folks to 72, right? So it, it can work for people of all ages. And what I found is that when folks have done some of their own work, um, they, they're clear or they recognize that they have some emotional blocks, some internal dialogue that's really not serving them anymore and is creating resistance to them moving forward effectively. Um, those are the folks that typically come to me. Um, I, I hear a lot, wow, I've tried everything else. I don't know what else to do. Please help me. Right. So from whether that's regaining their confidence and self-esteem to be a better leader, to have more presence in their life, to helping folks eliminate physical ailments that have been holding them back, um, inflammatory bowel syndrome, chronic migraines, um, arthritis, um, back pain, all sorts of different levels of physical pain that is manifested because of the beliefs that we hold about ourselves. Um, so oftentimes the, the folks that come to me are somewhere between the ages of like 35 to 55. Um, but I've worked with both men and women in all, all ages and um, it's, it's pretty powerful work. It's really fun. I, clearly you enjoy it because you just um, radiate as you talk about it. One of the things that you talk about that I'm fascinated by is breakthrough healing. So breakthrough healing must be relative to the neural transformation, the transformation people make within themselves. But would you speak more about that? Because I think there are a lot of people that look for various kinds of healing and would sure like it to go quickly if they could. Yes, well, I'm a particularly impatient person. <laughs> I like to move fast, think fast, do fast. And if, if I can get something done in 30 days versus six months or a year, I'm all about that, right? So that's why this process was so appealing to me. And when I went through it, it, it really was fast. Um, and so I call it a, a breakthrough healing program because of how we're able to get at a person's subconscious beliefs and blocks. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm in, in the, over a 30 day period, we start with a two hour RTT session. And inside of those two hours, I'm helping rapid someone RTT being rapid transformation, rapid transformational therapy yeah, is okay. what that stands for. That's okay. Marissa Peer's um, yep. process that I've been trained in. And inside of that first session, I'm helping folks relax into a, a wonderful place of um, that alpha brainwave state. That's kind of that half awake, half asleep place. Like when you've just woken up from a nap, and you're like, you're aware, but you're very, your body's very, very relaxed. And in that state, your conscious critical judging mind is not quite engaged. And so I'm able to actually talk with um, a person's subconscious to get at what are the root causes of this belief, of this block, of this um, issue that they keep repeating in their lives. Um, and then once we've identified that, they're able to see it as as an adult versus a child, which is often where those beliefs come into play, where we learn things um, from the atmosphere that we grow up in, good, bad, or ugly. And that's the, the, the atmosphere, the environment that we're swimming in, and it becomes our reality until we choose differently. 
But if we don't know that that has become our reality, our belief system about ourselves, we don't know that we can change it. So my work is kind of like, um, I'm kind of like a mind detective. Um, I get to help people drop into this deeper place within themselves to identify the blocks, to really put their finger on it and then neutralize the belief, change the belief, alter the emotional charge so that it's no longer a, <gasps> when that button gets, that trigger gets pressed, right? It's just a like, oh, okay, right? And so inside of that first session, then I'm also creating for them a customized transformation recording, which is a recording that they listen to um, every night as they drift off to sleep for the next 30 days. And what that's doing is literally building new neural pathways in your brain. You see your brain, Lois, likes repetition. So the more you think a thought, the more true that thought becomes for you. Good, bad, right or wrong, your brain doesn't care, it just lets it in. So the recording that I'm, I make for my clients is all about instilling new empowering beliefs, new behaviors, new thoughts. I am enough, I am worthy, I am deserving of success. Whatever their particular issue is, it's always customized and tailored to them. And, and so my clients then start listening to that recording every night and then we follow that up with three 60-minute coaching sessions over that 30-day period so that um, I can help them through the, the wobbly parts that happen because it's essentially like doing a brain detox. We're letting go of the old beliefs that no longer serve us and we're instilling new empowering beliefs. But if you know any of your listeners um, who are with us, if they've ever done like a sugar detox, right? And you take the sugar out of your diet, all the good stuff, all the fun stuff, and your body's like, hey, where did the good stuff go? It gets a little, gets a little ornery, right? So I, I support my clients through all that with the coaching and provide them with other tools and strategies for success. So by the end of the 30 days, they really have had a breakthrough. They've been able to identify it, rewire it, and, and start shifting how they show up in the world with greater confidence, with greater presence, with greater peace and calm. Um, it's, it's really beautiful to, to watch and, and to witness the transformations that people do go through. As I looked at some of what you have done, um, I noticed you've worked with a number of women's organizations and groups. And as I looked at that, I thought, are there um, transformations that are unique to women that women seek out that are different from men or do they is it the way that they interpret things that are different so if you could speak to that a little bit sure well I I work I tend to work with more women than men but I have worked with both it's kind of a 60 40 balance um, and that's just kind of who shows up right um, and what I found is the reoccurring themes of the people who come to me are around lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem, not feeling enough, um, men or women. So that, that, that really is like across the board, um, a, a challenge that so many people face. Um, and in working with women, um, I find that they are far more likely to um, be people pleasers. They're far more likely to take care of everyone else and not themselves um, because of how we're trained in society, right? Or our culture, um, wherever you might be on the planet. And, and so there's a different kind of resistance that shows up sometimes in working with, with women. Well, how could I do that? That would be selfish. Like, no, actually it's not selfish. It's, it's self-fulfilling because the more you can take care of yourself, the more of you is available to take care of and, and work with and collaborate with others. Um, so it's, it's a, a different way into a similar set of problems. So are there people for whom this um, rapid transformational therapy and your um, 
approach, your rewiring approach. Is, are there people for whom this would not work? I have worked with hundreds and hundreds of people from around the planet, literally. And out of all of them, I've only had a handful that have had such high levels of resistance and need for control that this hasn't worked very well for them, right? It's that level of how how in control does a person need to be? And I have ways of working with folks who do have those high levels of need to be in control um, to get them to relax and allow themselves to sink into the process, literally. Um, so I, I have a set of tools and things that I do for folks who are like that. And I, and, you know, I have a, a whole series of, you know, intake questions to help me get a clear picture of what they say they think the problem is and what actually is the problem, right? At the deeper level so that I know how to, um, approach them and the language that I need to use in the work that we're doing. Right. So, you know, it's, it is just fascinating because I think people who are executives who are moving, they want to move fast. I need to change, but please don't make it take a long period of time, right? <laughs> don't and, make me cry and don't make it take six months to a year. I just couldn't take that. Yeah, I understand. So it opens huge doors for people who are life moves quickly these days the demands are are huge and i think when we need to pivot the expectation is that we can also pivot quickly so having tools that facilitate that that's incredible can i just use an example and then apply what it is that you do so that people can get a handle on could this be useful in their setting for example so sure. lo looking at a workplace that is, um, let's say, a hybrid workplace. Some are going back to work, some are staying home, some are, let's say, some are rotating, so they take turns in office at home. There are people who, in that group, who are very afraid of going back to the office for fear of um, getting exposed and what are the risks that they're taking on. And um, I'm hearing that fear, irrespective of age, it depends just on what your past experiences are, probably more than anything. So if somebody came or uh, a team came and said, you know what, here's something we're really struggling with, where would you begin and what would you do? Sure. Well, first, I you know, would want to hear from the team, what are some of the fears, the worries, the anxieties that they're contending with? Um, because it's, you know, the strange world we're living in is strange. I, I mean, just today, it's why my light is so dim because the sky is literally orange with smoke um, from where I live in California right now. Um, things are just not as they seem and everything has been kind of flipped on its head this year. So really listening and wanting to hear what are some of the fears and the concerns that people have. And then um, whether that's individually or collectively as a team, um, I have a variety of um, employee well-being programs now that I also offer that incorporate um, training online via Zoom like this, right, um, in bite-sized chunks. Um, on a variety of different topics of how do we maintain our peace and our calm? How do we overcome the fear and anxiety that is just like lurking um, behind every corner right now? And then also giving them um, some customized transformation recordings that each of them individually can then listen to um, over the next 30 days to really help calm their system and to find greater peace of mind and get them back into action in a way that works for them and honors their values, how they want to be of contribution to the organization they're a part of, but also um, in a way that, that honors themselves and their family and, and taking care of their well-being. Right. 
you know, it sounds, um, I, I love the fact that you can do it in 30 days because you usually think of, okay, therapy, I have to hunker down for a year, right? And um, I mean, often that that's sort of people's experience a year, sometimes even longer than that. So you also talk about that mindful mindset shift. And is that the same process that you take people through or are there some different things in terms of mindset that you do? So there's, there's different ways to get at shifting your mind. There's the, there's the deep one-on-one -on -one work that we've been talking about, my rapid rewiring program. Um, and I also have uh, my rapid rewire membership program um, that I launched earlier this year, which is a way of helping people shift their mindset in a group setting. Um, we have twice monthly group mastermind calls. We have guest experts that come in and we talk about different topics. So this month, for example, we're talking about how do you live in alignment? How do you live from a place of your core values more effectively? Um, and so this this group community where people can um, have conversations with others of like mind, um, understand that they're not alone, right? Um, that the blocks, the worries, the fears that they're experiencing are often very similar to the next person and the next person and the next person, right? And inside of the membership community, I also have um, transformation recordings. So each month we have a different topic that we, we discuss um, from money to health and well-being to confidence to relationships to career, right? So it's really both personal and professional um, topics that we cover because I know, you know, that you don't take part of yourself to work. You take your whole self to work. And that includes all of the challenges that are going on at home, right? Whether you're still at home working or you're actually going into an office. Um, so there's, there's a lot of, um, I have several different ways to help folks really create those mindset shifts um, through the individual work, the group work, um, and the transformation recordings that, that I have for folks um, that really create those, that new learning at that deeper subconscious level um, by building those new neural pathways. So you do also a lot of work with um, teams, hel helping them become um, more efficient, more effective, so that profitability, productivity increases. So if I were a team leader now with all this uncertainty that's going on, one, two things that that leader, that manager could do that would strengthen um, and enhance the effectiveness of teams? That's a great question, Lois. I get this a lot, actually. Um, because we've all had to literally got thrown into the deep end of the pool like okay you're working from home now all of you <laughs> until we figure something else out um and so as a leader it's really really important to know that connection is key making sure that you stay connected with each of your employees um because it folks who are are not used to working from home um it can be very, very challenging. Yes. And, um, and so giving them tools for more effectively managing their time and their day um, and knowing that they're not alone, right? Because we can't walk down the hall and ask your colleague a question or your boss a question. So um, it has people feeling more vulnerable because, well, I don't have the answers. I used to go ask Mary down the hall and I can't do that now. So what do I do? Right? So from a leader's <coughs> perspective, um, making sure that you have those connections with your team um, and that you really listen, right? It's everyone has been called to step up in a lot of ways, especially leaders, because 
as people are feeling more vulnerable, leaders included, we're having to show some of our vulnerability, right? Kind of peek behind the armor um, to make people feel okay. And that, and that can be hard if, you know, depending on your style of leadership and the type of organization that you're in. So connection and communication is vitally important, but also learning how to um, maintain your own well-being you know, people are on Zoom calls hour after hour after hour after hour. And how do you how do you do that and, you know, manage family who might be in the background or you've got kids you're trying to homeschool or make sure they're taken care of? I've, I've heard it all lately. And, you know, my heart goes out to um, working parents that have kids at home and they're trying to figure out the schooling thing. So making sure that there's, you're able to take, even if it's five minutes for well-being practices, you know, pause, do some deep breathing, um, even if it's just, you know, meditating for just a few minutes or taking time to read something that's uplifting versus listening to the news or scrolling through Facebook because there's a lot of toxicity out there right now. So, Doing, doing those kinds of things to really maintain your own balance um, is the, the best way that I've seen to really help leaders um, help their teams be more effective too. You know, I think um, that whole concept of how do you keep your own self in balance is so huge because yeah. I also find when the demands increase, we tend to eliminate the things that are a part of self-care and we don't have the energy if we haven't taken care of ourselves. Yes. Right? Yes, absolutely. It's, uh, I always have to remind people and myself sometimes that um, we work better when we take time to pause and step away, to refresh our thinking, to go focus outside. I, you know, during the pandemic, I was able to plant my garden, right? To plant my vegetable garden. So it was like, it's been my, my daily Zen practice to go out and water the vegetables, right? Take a break, eat some lunch, water the vegetables, come back. And it's just those little breaks that we're able to take to clear our mind that gives us the ability to come back and focus and be really creative and productive. Michelle, we have been talking for half an hour. And before we close, though, I would like to ask you last thoughts, things that you would like to leave with the audience that we haven't talked about or that you just think are, is really important for people to know. Sure. Well, one of the things that I found in working with people from all over the world, Lois, is that one of the core beliefs that get in people's way is just simply feeling that they're not enough in some way, shape, or form, right? And despite all of the work that I had done for so many years, I was even surprised. I was like, oh, right. I have a belief of I'm not enough too. And so the, the nugget that I have for everyone listening is just simply start telling yourself, I am enough. Write it on a sticky note, put it on your mirror, put it on your phone, and repeat it to yourself regularly. I am enough. I am enough, even if you don't believe it. Because eventually, the more you repeat it to yourself, it will sink in at that deeper subconscious level. And you'll wake up one day and you're like, well, of course I'm enough. Why did I ever think that I wasn't? And that simple shift in knowing that you are enough, you always have been, you always will be, can shift how you see the world and how you take charge and, and step into owning your power and your presence more fully. So if you can change your thoughts, you can change your life. It's really, really quite powerful. That What a gift. What a gift that you give to people. And for those of you who are listening, we will have information about Michelle and how to reach her. You can always contact us. We will be glad to 
um, make contact um, for any of you who are interested. So just simply let us know. You can email me. Our email information is in the show notes as well. Michelle, it has been wonderful to be with you and to have you, this time to learn about really rapid transformation. And I think more and more that's what we're going to be looking for is a quick fix, but a fix that can be also long lasting. And I think that only happens when our, the messages in our brain begins to change. So I appreciate yes. that work of yours. And um, thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you. It's been my sincere pleasure, Lois, to talk with you today and to share with you um, some of the joyful work that I get to do in the world. And um, I just, I love being of service in this way and know that, you know, we all have our challenges, we all have our blocks. And when you can start to see that you can change your mind and, and your beliefs about yourself, it has this powerful ripple effect in all other areas of your life. So um, thank you for the good work that you're doing in the world and um, to all your listeners who are with us today. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to Building My Legacy podcast today. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell button above. Leave comments. We'd love to hear what you think. And visit our other social media links as well. Thanks much.